God, church? He's real in your soul. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon, church. This past Wednesday, our pastoral council met to discuss the current proposals regarding the archdiocese's planning process. I would imagine by now most of you are familiar with Archbishop Laurie's plan to organize all the parishes of the archdiocese into pastorates. A pastorate will be a unit of ministry made up of one or more churches led by a single ministry team. One pastor, one director of religious education, one youth minister, and so on. Well, right now there are two proposals on the table for St. Bernardine's. The first has us grouped with St. Edward's and St. Cecilia's. But there's another one that has us grouped with St. Edward's and St. Gregory the Great. And the Archdiocese is saying now that they'll probably be releasing a final proposal next week. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. I believe in God, but. <laughs> now, even though we don't have a concrete proposal on the table, I wanted to get our pastoral council's thoughts on the two current proposals. And while the tenor of our conversation overall was very positive, I still had a sense of unease myself about the whole prospect of creating a pastorate with other parishes. Been there, done that. <laughs> so at the end of the meeting, I asked the council members to go around the table one by one so that each could tell me how they were feeling about what we're facing. And again, most members had very positive things to say overall. But one council member even pointed out that she had much less anxiety over the prospect of us becoming part of a pastorate than she did over the prospect of Donald Trump becoming our next president. <laughs> Now, like this, everybody laughed. But I started thinking about it a bit more. Yeah, we do have potentially a lot of problems ahead of us. I mean, not just the presidential election, but how can you ignore Hurricane Matthew and all of the havoc it has just wreaked in the lives of those who were in its path? And then I thought about all of the shootings in our city and how we had one right here on our corner Thursday night. Wow. With all of the problems around us, forming a pastorate with two other churches just might be the least of them. Writer Amy Lamott once said that there are only two types of prayer. The first is help me, help me, help me. That's probably the one I know best. <laughs> I know that from my perspective and experience as a pastor, I have lots of concerns about this planning process and how it's going to play out. 
Dealing with all of your personalities is tough enough. <laughs> but add two more parishes into the mix? Help me, help me, help me. And even though I'm confident, and I really am, that we'll come through this process just fine, it's still going to be a lot of hard work. And we have to make sure somehow that the uncertainty of the planning process doesn't consume us and doesn't discourage us from taking on the new initiatives now and addressing the ongoing concerns now for fear of what may happen later. Then there's dealing with our corner right here on Mount Holly and Edmondson. So you may have heard on the news Thursday evening there was a shooting here. Fortunately, no one was killed. But those of us who have been working on the issue knew that it was just a matter of time. And this is a parish issue. We need to work with the owner of Mike Corner Store, the leaders of our neighborhood, the members of the police department, and even the young people themselves to make sure everyone is safe. But you know, it's also a personal issue. Because some folks may choose to avoid the problem just by not coming to church. Well, I live here, just like many others. And I have to confront it every day of the week. Help me, help me, help me. Then there's my 86-year-old mother who has dementia. She no longer remembers my father's name, and I'm not even sure she remembers my name or my siblings' names, because I haven't heard her use them in months. I travel two hours up to Philly and two hours back, four hours, in order to visit her. But I only spend a few hours there because she really can't carry on a conversation anymore. And of course, that's not bad enough. She doesn't even remember that I visit her, so I get no credit for the visit. <laughs> help me, help me, help me. Well, I could go on and on as I'm sure each one of you can do the same. Take a number. At some point, we all cry out, help me, help me, help me. And we hope that God will hear our prayer and answer our plea. Now let's be clear, there's nothing wrong with asking God for help. I mean, after all, what good is God if we can't ask him for help? And I'm sure God wants us to ask him for help because God wants to help us. But we have to be careful not to make that prayer our only prayer to God. If all we do is ask God for things, then God becomes nothing more to us than a sugar daddy. <laughs> and as I've said before, God is no sugar daddy. Besides, I suspect that all of us have someone in our lives whom we hear from only when they want something from us. And do we really want that? to be our relationship with God? But even more than that, looking at the world through a lens of need puts us in the position of being 
the victim. And as victim, everything in life begins to conspire against us. Even when things aren't really all that bad, or we just happen upon some bad luck, we become convinced that life is out to get us. And we constantly have to recruit God to protect us from all the conspiracies around us. And you know, eventually some of us actually like playing the role of victim. Because eventually everything becomes someone else's fault. Everything can be blamed on everyone but ourselves. And we don't have to take any responsibility because after all, we're just innocent victims. Sound like anyone you know? Maybe even someone running for president? <laughs> but I'll stay on message. <laughs> In today's gospel, we hear the story of 10 people with leprosy who cry out to Jesus for help. Jesus, Master, they say, have pity on us. Now, leprosy was a tough disease back in Jesus' time. It not only made the person deal with a horrible skin condition for which there may not have been a cure, but it also excluded them from society as they were forced to live in leper colonies apart from the community. Lepers were true victims. They had virtually no control over their situation. And when they were constantly in positions, and they were constantly in positions to ask for help. So it wasn't surprising that they would call out to Jesus for help, trying to get some relief from their situation. And it wouldn't have been surprising for them to heed Jesus' instructions to go and show themselves to the priests because they knew that the priests were the only ones who could declare them clean and readmit them to society. So it was understandable that these lepers would seek help from Jesus and then seek help from the priests because they were used to crying out, help me, help me, help me. It was surprising, however, that only one of them, a Samaritan, realizing that he had been cured, broke out of his mission to seek help and returned to Jesus to give thanks. Ten were cleansed, were they not? Jesus asks. Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Could only one of them realize what had happened to him and actually return to Jesus to acknowledge it? You see, when we can break out of our victim mentality, we can actually begin to see the world as it truly is. There are always things going wrong around us, but those are not the only things going on around us. There are a lot of things right with this world, and refusing to play the victim allows us to see them. And seeing them allows us to acknowledge and to give thanks to God for them. You see, the only other prayer than help me, help me, help me, according to Amy Lamott, is thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, thank you, thank you is important because it flips the victim mentality right on its head. 
It shifts us from always experiencing the world from a perspective of need to experiencing the world from a perspective of abundance. It acknowledges the good things in life and it empowers us to celebrate them. The target of bad news becomes the recipient of good news. The object of fate becomes the subject of faith. And the powerless victim becomes the powerful participant. And that's why Jesus can say to the Samaritan who returned to give thanks, your faith has saved you. Because our very recognition and acknowledgement of the grace around us allows us to participate in it. When we look for the good things in life, even among the bad, we can take control of our perspective. We can see the many gifts that surround us, give thanks to God, and then share in his saving work. So even though I see all of the possible difficulties with bringing three parishes together, and I want to cry out, help me, help me, help me, my faith allows me to see all the possible gifts that people from other parishes could bring to us. And then in faith I can pray, thank you, thank you, thank you. And even though the challenges in this neighborhood seem to mount with each passing day, causing me to call out, help me, help me, help me. My faith allows me to see the blessings of the many neighbors who greet me on the street and who are happy to know that the local priest actually lives among them. And then in faith, I can pray, thank you, thank you, thank you. And even though it's tough to think that my mother no longer knows my name, so I really do want to scream, help me, help me, help me. My faith allows me to see the blessing that her face still lights up when I walk into the room. And she can even tell the other ladies, he's my son. And then, in faith, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, when we look at the world around us and can only say, help me, help me, help me, we only see the world from a perspective of need. We only see ourselves as the victim of a world full of problems and challenges. We only wake up each day and prepare ourselves for one more disappointment. But when we face the world with an attitude of gratitude, we see the world from a perspective of abundance. We see the joys, no matter how small, and the opportunities, no matter how remote, that God is sending us each and every day. We receive the power to engage the world with hope and confidence because we understand that our faith has saved us. So there's nothing wrong with the prayer, help me, help me, help me. I plan on still making it. Because God is indeed here to help us. And God wants to help us more than we can possibly imagine. But church, God is no sugar daddy. And the last thing he wants is for us to be the victims of our need. Remember, there are two types of prayer. Help me, help me, help me. And thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Every now and then, just try to look at the world from a perspective of abundance. Try to see the many blessings that God showers upon us, even in the midst of our challenges. Remember that there is nothing that's going to happen today that you and God can't handle together. Be grateful for every new day, for every new breath, for every new opportunity to recognize what God is doing for you. And then like that Samaritan who returned to say thank you, thank you, thank you, stand up and go because your faith has saved you. Amen.